Welcome to Gaming on a Budget. Today we bring you a bit of a departure from our norm. We have Descent, Journeys in the Dark, First Edition. Now, if you're anything like my wife, you're going to be sitting there going, in what universe is First Edition Descent a budget by? Not only is it out of print, but the box is enormous, so you know shipping is going to be fun. Well, I wouldn't call it cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but one thing I'm trying to cover here on Gaming on a Budget is not just cheap games, but whether a game is worth the money you're going to need to put into it. So, for those of you not familiar, Descent is a tactical miniatures game wherein one player will control the forces of evil and darkness, the Overlord player, tonight being represented by my lovely and talented camera wife, and all other players, up to four, will be playing the adventurers, attempting to slay evil and, and it seems from most of the adventure descriptions, just kind of gain some loot and do well for themselves. <laughs> they don't sound all that altruistic in the flavor text, but maybe we just haven't gotten to far enough adventures. At any rate, uh, I'm not going to try and cover all the rules to this game. There are quite a few little fiddly rules that um, really only one person needs to know. As long as you've got one person that's read the book and is familiar with the background mechanics, preferably the Overlord, then it's pretty easy for even the uninitiated to sit down and play. We recently played with another couple that uh, the wife had no exposure to fantasy whatsoever outside of seeing the Lord of the Rings movies. So it was a completely new ball game to her. And there was some adjustment in the beginning, certainly, but she got into the swing of things pretty fast. Now, one other thing I should warn you, we do have the Well of Darkness expansion mixed in here, and it would be kind of difficult to separate. One of the main inspirations for doing this video now was that we were in the middle of a game and went, hey, you know what, we could just film the gameplay section of actual factual game in progress and definitely give you a good idea of what you're looking at here. So, uh, the basics are, for the hero players, which I will be representing, you have four actions to choose from. You can take a battle action, which grants you no movement points on its own, but enables you to attack two times. That can be a pretty big deal. You can take an advance action, which will give you your, um, your speed attribute, the little boot there, in movement points, so in this case four, and make an attack at any point during that. You could attack and then move, you could move two spaces and attack and then move two more, you know, so on and so forth. The card down. Okay. <laughs> uh, then you have uh, the run action where you get double your speed rating but no attacks. And finally you have the ready action where you can either move or attack and you can then also uh, place an order token. The order tokens have different effects depending on which one you select. There's the guard action, which lets you uh, at any time during the overlord's turn stop him and make an attack. So, for example, you could wait for something to advance on you and then smack it before it has a chance to smack you. You have the rest action, which, if you are left undamaged until the start of your next turn, will restore all of your fatigue, which is pretty valuable. You have uh, the aim action, which will let you, until you either move or take damage, the next ranged attack you make, you can reroll some or all of the dice, giving you a better chance to hit and kill. And finally... It's not necessarily a ranged attack, it's an attack. Oh, any you attack? Aim okay. A yeah. Melee yeah, attack. yeah, yeah. The picture little bow makes me want to say yeah. ranged. Okay, and then finally dodge, which can enable you to force anything attacking the dodging character to reroll some or all of their dice, thus minimizing their chances of horribly killing you. So, um, beyond that, what we're doing in our particular adventure of the moment is uh, I am attempting to slay two 
powerful, evil, horrible, giant monsters that, uh, through dark sorceries, are all but unkillable. I have tracked down one of the beast's hearts and destroyed it. So, in future turns, I'm hoping to be able to take this giant down, then find his brother and his brother's heart and take him down as well. Now, this game has a fairly long playing time, several hours at least, so you're only going to get to see a little bit of that. But, you know, it should hopefully still prove exciting, a thrilling adventure. Now, uh, keep in mind it will be a little bit challenging for my camera wife to film all of this perfectly since she has to both concentrate on playing her side and, you know, getting footage of what I'm doing and so on, but, you know, so bear with us. Um, yeah, beyond that, I'll just explain the little relevant bits as we go, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So, let's go on over to the gameplay. Okay, as I mentioned previously, we are joining a game in progress, so let me get you up to speed here. These are my intrepid adventurers. Nanak, the, at the moment, ridiculously overpowered fighter. <laughs> uh, Ronan, the pitifully underpowered ranger who has abandoned his bow for lack of ability to accomplish anything with ranged attacks. And Andira, the uh, melee range pierce happy spellcaster, <laughs> who's been interesting. Now, uh, we've been doing fairly well so far. We have collected a large pile of conquest tokens, which are our lives, and we've exposed the heart of one of the giants and destroyed it, but in exchange, the dungeon's beginning to get a wee little bit crowded here. So, we're over here in town. We're going to have to come out of one of these teleport points. And at some point, I gotta take big old Batty McBatterson down. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have my dudes come out of this one and, you know, good old fashioned Blitzkrieg attack and hope for the best. Um, now, I think that I'm going to start with, uh, with N. Well, no, I'm gonna start with Ronan. Ronan does have a weapon with reach on it, which means he can attack at melee one space farther than normal. So, since I'd really like to do... Do you have enough? Yep. Uh, I'd really like to do a battle action with him. What I'm going to do is spend his remaining two fatigues. See, he's got four points of stamina and he's only used two. Uh, to get two movement points, which will let him go from town to the glyph for one, and then one more space for two. So, because of his reach, he can actually hit any of these people right now and treat it as a melee attack. Now, I'm going to cross my fingers that he doesn't pull his usual epic fail nonsense, and I'm going to try and kill this red Ferox here, because that thing is extremely nasty. That is a mean, mean, mean critter right there. So... I'm going to look down at my weapon card over here for Ronin, which tells me I'm going to need one red dice, one green dice, a yellow dice, and unfortunately only one black dice for melee. So that's all he's going to get to roll. So I'm going to go ahead and make my first attack. And let's see, I have, I ignore the big numbers, they're ranged, and he's not ranged attacking. So I've got... Five, six hearts, and a lightning bolt. I can count that as a heart because I don't need to use it for range. You have two lightning bolts. Oh yeah, my weapon comes with a free lightning bolt. So, so for two bolts. surges, the lightning bolts are called surges, I can get three extra damage. So I'm doing a total of nine points of damage with that attack. With the other surge, you can do four extra points of damage. Bazooka. On the dice here. One surge. Oh, you're Two right. Surge. I missed one. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> and the free one from the weapon. My ferox, but <laughs> Good catch, sweetie. Uh, and the Ferox Master, since he's red, has nine total. So I. Oh, I just managed to kill him, didn't I? I think I did, right? Six, nine, ten. Yep, yep. He are defeat. So poor Sad. little Ferox are explode. Um. Now I'm surrounded by deadly, deadly kobolds, so... They're super squish. 
Yeah, but they're nasty when you leave this many in place. So I'm going to go for this one with my second attack. So I'll go ahead and roll that. Uh, four, five, six, all totaled from the one free surge, giving other damage. But kobolds, you say, are pretty squishy, huh? Yep, he's got four health and one armor. The way armor works is you have to do that much damage before you start actually damaging their hit points each time you attack them. If you have an effect called pierce, you can ignore a certain amount of their armor. So, I've managed to successfully take out two of the monsters, and it's still not looking terribly friendly for me in here. I'm... Ugh. Okay, now, now let's do Nanak. I've got a straight path to King Giant, and he's got a whole pile of fatigue, so... He's also going to battle, and he's going to fatigue move one, two, three, four to put himself into range. Ugh. So I just spent four fatigue. Oh, I should note for the record that these awesome player mats I'm using are created by a user, I believe, named Tin Omen on BGG. They're in the file section, Board Game Geek. It's very, very cool. Very nice little uh, player aids there. So. He is going to be rolling significantly more dice. He's getting two yellows, a green and a red, and because of Pico, the ranger's little friend that he's holding, he's getting all three black dice. So he's going to be rolling a lot. But this giant has a ton of armor and hit points, so... Okay, yeesh, not great. Well, wait, uh, maybe not too bad. Seven two, three surges, uh, eight, okay, so he's got eight, he's also, one of his skill cards is giving him two more for a total of ten, and he's getting two free surges from another one of his skill cards, so, Plus. uh, let's see, each surge is giving him two damage and two free surges, good grief, this is a lot of money, Plus. two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, um, it's, oh yeah, and the two from the bracers, good grief, so it's like 22 points of damage or something? Yeah. Is that sufficient? Yeah, hold this. Yeah, the, uh, Nanak is a little bit silly in terms of power. That's, uh, one of the bosses one-shotted right there. <clears throat> It, normally it's not going to be quite so ridiculous, but uh, Nanak has drawn like all the right treasure throughout the game, and everyone else is so-so, but, you know, not anywhere near Nanak. So, uh, I'll go mm -hmm. ahead and hit another co- Flavor. Oh, flavor text. Ah, important. The giant falls to the floor, a look of horror on his stupid face. No heart, no breath, I feel my death. From the distance, you hear a cry of rage. My brother! I will avenge you! Uh, four conquest tokens. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attack uh, this other kobold right here. Thanks to Reach, he's in range. Uh, and probably easily kill it. Uh, yeah, that's one dead Master Cobalt there. So, uh, we will also be getting a little bit of money for killing the red guys, but I'll deal with that in a second. Uh, that just leaves Andira over here to take her turn. Um, she does actually have range. She likes to fight at melee because of her extra pierce skill, but none of these guys have enough armor it's going to matter anyways. So, she'll just, um... Oh, first she'll recover one fatigue point from her cool little enchanted armor. Then she'll go ahead and spend that fatigue point again to travel to the ruin. And also battle. She's just going to take a shot at this guy and then, I don't know, that guy or something. So she gets, she gets two greens, a white and a yellow, plus three blacks from her magic skill there. See the three black dice icons. So, uh, first the Master Kobold, 
Oh, and she misses! That X means the whole attack misses. Ugh. That's just what I needed. Alright, well I guess we'll attack the same guy again. Hey, you stop that. That's not a victory. That's a deadly, deadly failure. <laughs> really? With this? <laughs> okay, well that is highly unfortunate with what that is. So, that's all of my guys. Um, they're flipped over to X's. So, uh, that's on over to the Overlord turn, where hopefully we don't take too much of a beating. Okay, well, we took a bit of a beating on this side. So, at the start of the Overlord turn, we get threat points for each hero. He has three heroes, I get three threat points, which I can switch out for a five with the two I already have. Boop. And then I draw two overlord cards. Let's see what we got. Um, let's see. I got that. That's not going to do me much good right now. That one could be nice. Let's see what we already have in the hand. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you can have a maximum of eight in your hand. Mm, we might use that. If you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna spawn creatures, man, anyway, if you're gonna spawn creatures, you have to do it at the beginning of your turn. You can only do it at the beginning, not after you've done anything else. So, you look down at the bottom, the green is how much this card is gonna cost you in threat points, and this, if you discard it, which you can do at any time, will get you more threat points. So we're gonna go ahead and play this one. We are spawning a Beastman War Party. Uh, so you don't we have get enough on the board? No. No, I don't. So we get two Beastmen and one Master Beastman. Do I have that in my creature graveyard? No. Because my Beastmen are over here. But in the box of monsters, I do. Let's see. No. 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 There they are. Okay. Now Can there are some. I need two regulars and one master. There two are. Regulars. I need to note some rules to spawning. I cannot spawn within line of sight of the heroes. Also, my own creatures like here, do not block line of sight for placement, placing. So let's see, he's moved him just far enough that nowhere in this area can I spawn. But luckily enough, my spider closed the door. <laughs> so since they have to come through this center space, we're spawning here. I'm just going to place guys. See this here is no ordinary bane spider. It's a spider butler, feared throughout the dungeon for their closing of doors and <laughs> cleaning of tablecloths. <laughs> That's about all they're good for. They die before I get to do much with them. Oh, please. Bane spiders are evil. They are, which is awesome. <laughs> so now... I'm worried about what that cobalt <clears throat> swarm's going to accomplish. Now I get to activate Eesh. my creatures. Oh, I need to move my... These guys get to join my creature oh, yeah. graveyard. I'll go ahead and take the money. Oh. Yeah. As a note, he gets 50 coins per... Master monster, master monster he or kills. Or the red guys. So, yeah. So he just earned 100 bucks with whoever killed the giant. Or 50 with the guy who killed the giant and 50 for the guy that killed the kobolds. Now, anyway, my kobolds have a movement of three. And as you can see, they're awfully squishy. But they have Swarm, which is awesome. We'll explain that in a second. So we're going to go one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Oh. Wait, don't you have to resolve their whole activation? Oh, do I? I think so. Is this guy over here? That yeah. guy was over here. All right, well, he gets four power dice anyway. Yep. So what Swarm is doing 
is it's giving him an extra black power die for each other monster adjacent to the hero under attack. So there's one, two, three others adjacent. Doesn't he, it doesn't count himself? No, he doesn't Aww. count himself, so it would be three black dice. Okay. Well, and then... On top of as what a cobalt, else it's just a red. Still, that's not bad. Still, for a white cobalt. Four. That's not bad. Oh. oh, I got it. I got it. I'm hoping the Nox's mighty non-armor armor will protect him. He has like five points of armor and he's not wearing it. Yeah, <laughs> he's an oddball. That's... So, Woo. two, three, Safe. nothing. If I had two surges, I'd get a new threat point, but I don't. So then, we're going to move this guy in. Two, three. Now and he's he gonna be resolve. rolling four power dice. I should have done that first. I'm gonna try not to shake y'all too much. Oh. And X yes. of shame. Bum 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 bum. But I have a feeling your next monster is going to get yet another power dice. Oh yeah, because we're gonna move him in. Up to a, you can't have more than five black power dice. Also, with the creatures, I don't get to announce battle or no. Advance. I'm pretty much always in advance. So if I don't move my movement points, I can move them away. Oh, hello. Let's see. Oh, snap. Oh. That's four, five, six damage. Unfortunately, only seven one surge. Seven is what I'm counting. Wait, four. Oh, yes, seven. And seven his damage. AC is a five, so a white monster just hit him for two. Ooh, Something very which, few other creatures have I'd managed. I'd like to point out the whole game, I've given him three hearts. That guy. Right there. <laughs> okay, okay, who's next? So, we attacked with this guy. Let's go ahead and attack with this guy now. It's also a four. On the same guy. Because, why not? Wait, no. wouldn't that be five power dice? What? Oh, the pharaoh. Wait. Were you talking <gasps> with the kobold or the pharaoh? Kobold. Okay, then it's still five. Roll the oh, other. This okay. one's the one you didn't roll. There okay. we go. Surge. Anyway, it's probably good. To Ooh, two surges. Yep. That's Three, good. four. I did not make enough to get through his armor. My Oof. one, two, three, four, five. Dang but close, though. I did make kobolds enough. Kobolds are getting threatening. To get a new threat point. Five is a lot of armor, by the way. It is. It's an obscene amount of armor. So, hmm. What does my Ferrex do? He does the two. Bleed is a fun oh, one. Oh, yeah, because all I have to do is hit you. It gets, yes. Doesn't, that's before armor. Yep, so even if the armor stops all the damage, I think bleed still works. Let me find it. Well, a darkness book while you're doing that. Mm, I'm actually going to attack. Uh, Bleed is a well of darkness effect. It's not in the base. Ronin here with bleed. Well, with the Ferrex. We're going to hope anyway. Yep, determine whether damage is inflicted before applying the effects of armor. Okay, well, I did three. So, he doesn't actually take any damage, but he does get an evil, 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 evil bleed token. They look like this. And since Phil didn't listen, he put it on the wrong character. Oh, you're I attacking Ronin. Ronin. Oh. Which, in poor, hindsight, poor is Ronin. silly. But, whatever. So this Ferox is going to go. Uh, Cobalt is going to go. This, he hasn't gone. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy have all gone. But not this guy. That I remember. You're right. So, I'm going to get my six dice. Hopefully, hopefully, we can roll a little bit better. That's not. Oh! That's a re-roll. No, you know it. We have not been doing that. That was sideways. We have not. Whatever. Ow. <laughs> That's still bad. Three, four, five, six... Seven, and I get a threat. Yeesh. Never ignore the lowly kobold, I guess. No. So, that's it for that set of kobolds. So this guy here, he's gonna move in. Cause why not? And we're gonna attack him. Aww. And he's gonna get one, two, three power dice. 
What did poor Ronan ever do? Oh, oh, and he is the red one. So he gets an extra. Where are you? There you are. He gets an extra power dice. So he's going to roll four. Ronan exists, and he gives the other Gosh. guy an extra power die, Three which is an armor. Oh, wait. Wait, three. I'm going to exhaust my shield of light to cancel all three of the wounds that we get through. What does trickster mean? Oh, that's the last thing. The thing that makes your traps cheaper. See, Ronan has a shield of light. See? That's pretty spicy. So he's going to exhaust that to stop those wounds. Yeah. Well, now that that's exhausted, let's hit him with the next cobalt. Yes, let's. Yep. That guy. Oh. And it's a miss. A horrible miss of doom. Hard luck, Pete. Yeah. But I still get a threat. That happens. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And then I think those three are going to stay there. And these guys, they're chilling, having coffee. All that jazz. Um, there's, I'm going to take these with me because there's a couple of things I could have played on his turn that I wasn't able to. And on that note, it is the hero's turn. Oh, man. See, she's aligned herself in this room in a very clever fashion because what I'd like to do is just hop back on the teleporter, go to town, and come back over here and just, you know, maul these guys because it's over here I'm trying to go. See, that door is rune locked, so I'm going to have to find the key in there to get it open. But her melee guys are all arranged around the glyph, so actually I have a better chance coming in through the door than I do just mauling them where they're at. Oh, jeez. Oh man, we are running really long on time, so maybe for the first time ever we'll do an extended gameplay segment. But for now, we're going to go ahead and cut because you can see the insanity that is Descent.